Hello everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So, Dale over here has an RV12, and he was asking me to show him more about uh, sort of airplane assembly, if you will, uh, riveting and the like. Um, the RV12 uses mostly um, blind rivets, which are pull rivets, people call them pop rivets, um, and we have some of these over here. Uh, but we'll go through the different kinds of rivets, we're gonna go through um, figuring out what kind of rivet you're going to use, preparing the metal for riveting, drilling, the different tools we're going to use, um, and uh, then we're going to, you know, fasten some pieces of metal together. Yeah. So, the, the three sort of general kinds of rivets. Um, so, airplane rivets are mostly aluminum. Um, some of the pull rivets are made out of different metals and there's like a, an infinite variety of different uh, uh, shanks versus the rivet piece versus uh, all that. So we're not gonna go into that too much. We're gonna talk about mostly these kinds of rivets. And there's two varieties. There's the countersunk rivet, which has the little sort of chamfered head and they sit below the surface or at the level of the surface of the um, skin that you're riveting. And then there's the universal head rivets that have got this little mushroom head on the top and they just sit over the top. And these are the ones that you usually see on like a Cessna or an airplane out there um, on the ramp, right there. Generally, it's these. Um, it, it, it's argued that these provide a little more aerodynamics and maybe the airplane's gonna go a little faster. Uh, I think there's been some studies about that that maybe it's not that big of an impact, but I don't know. Um, and then these are the pull rivets. These are Mark 319 BSs. These are fairly common rivets in the RV series of airplanes. Um, they're slightly bigger than uh, this, the diameter size of these, which we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, fairly common. And then there are um, Cherry Max. Uh, the Cherry brand rivets makes structural um, fancy blind rivets, if you will. Um, Every so often you'll see me use this in the uh, RV builds. I'll usually use one of these when I've tried with a regular rivet a few times and it's becoming a bit of a nightmare and I just sort of give up and use one of these. Um, these are sort of pricey. They're usually 20 cents to maybe 50 cents a piece compared to these where, you know, there's maybe five cents of rivets here <laughs> um, or something like that. I don't even know how how much these cost. But yeah, so these are significantly more expensive and of course they're a lot heavier as well. So you don't use these very often. They are structural, um, so you can use them in the majority of places. Of course, if you're going to be swapping um, rivets that the manufacturer recommends or, or specs out for something different, um, it's a good idea to reach out to them and make sure that that's okay. So the rivets, the two kinds of rivets that we use, uh, the AN426 and the AN470. <laughs> Uh, the 426 are the countersunk one and the 470 are the, the universal head ones. Um, so they're measured in two different ways. There's the diameter of the, the rivet shank itself, and that's the first digit. So it's uh, AN420, I don't think that's right. <laughs> Here we go, AN470 AD4, and that's in 30 seconds. So that's four 30 seconds diameter, which is a 1 8th diameter rivet. And this is an AN426, it's actually AD, oh, it's correct, 83, uh, which is 330 seconds, which is the most common rivet in the, in the RV. Um, the 330 seconds is uh, roughly equivalent to a number 40 uh, wire size drill bit, and the 1 8th um, is a number 30 drill bit. So those are usually the drill bits we use to, to drill these. And these are like a few thou bigger than that. Yeah, the yeah, just cabinet. a slightly, slightly bigger. We have a fancy little uh, Cleveland tool chart over here on the wall that has all of the digits on them. Um, <laughs> and I refer to that fairly often. So um, if you ever purchase something from Cleveland tool, make sure to ask them to send you one of those. <laughs> okay, uh, so sizing the rivets. Um, once you set a rivet, you there's a spec to which what is the correct, you know, how much it's set. And you use little rivet sizing tools for that. So the to set a um, 83 rivet, a 332nd rivet, you want the shop head to not fit in the hole for the three. 
and you want to the height of the rivet, you can barely see it here because it's actually full of pro seal. Um, you want the height of the rivet to be also not be lower than the number three over here. So we'll show you that when we get to it, but that gives you an idea of um, rivets. So a little bit about the different tools that we're gonna use. So there's two main ways to um, set a rivet. Of course, a pull rivet uses a pull rivet tool, which we're not gonna use today. Everybody's used one of these probably. Um, but you can either squeeze the rivet with a manual squeezer or a pneumatic squeezer, or you can buck a rivet with a tool that basically hammers on one side and you have a heavy piece of metal, uh, be it tungsten or some sort of steel on the other side to form the, the shop head. Um, you'll notice that the, the squeezers have different kinds of dies that go in there and there's a whole set of them over here. And the, it's mostly, I have dimple dies on the top to create the dimples for different size rivets. Um, so the most common one is the 332nd, which by chance is also the one that's on the pneumatic squeezer right now. Um, and of course the 1 8th is the other most common. There's a couple of other more specialized size, sizes for, uh, for example, screws, different screw sizes over here. Um, I have some uh, smaller uh, diameter 332nd ones for sort of tight confines and things like that. Um, and some other stuff in there. Tune in for the next few episodes of uh, riveting and general airplane tools and such.